Hi, everybody, and uh, welcome again today to another WinPeers Weekly Webinar. Uh, my name is Ben Cutler, and I'm one of our uh, solutions specialists here at WinPeer. And uh, just a quick reminder here, we're, we're hosting these uh, weekly webinars uh, generally geared towards uh, very specific topics, uh, basic product training, uh, product introduction. Uh, we're also going to start uh, inviting guest speakers, uh, you know, specialists in uh, systems uh, migrations uh, and things like that. So I'd invite you all just to uh, stay tuned and join us when you can or keep your eyes out for the recordings when you can join us live. This week we're going to be taking a uh, look at an introduction to our clean and match uh, API. So just uh, kind of a, a high level quick introduction here. Worth noting is that everyone in the call is muted, uh, but of course you can ask questions uh, via the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. And I will try to answer those questions usually starting at about the 15 or 20 minute mark. Uh, feel free to submit your questions uh, sooner if you'd like to. Also keep in mind this webinar is being recorded uh, and I will send a link to uh, the recording along with a link to my online calendar. If you'd like to get in touch, I'd encourage you to do so. Um, I do wanna emphasize that we appreciate feedback, questions. Um, if you've got some suggestions about uh, future topics, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have any interest in uh, joining us uh, as a, a guest speaker to talk about uh, some of the projects that you've worked on and your experience, uh, we'd be happy to have that conversation. So thanks again for joining us today and uh, let's jump uh, right into the topic today. So first things first here is, is, is really a, a quick disclosure from my side. I'm more of a data guy than I am a systems guy. I'm not very technical, so I can get in, you know, over my head pretty quickly in a conversation about APIs. There's a lot to know. But that being said, I do know a few things about how you might want to use our API. Uh, preparing for this webinar today, I found some very useful information from a McKinsey article referencing their own analysis. Happy to share that article if anybody wants to reach out with that request. Just paraphrasing from uh, one of the articles that they wrote in 2017, McKinsey said, uh, essentially, uh, was that very few organizations have mature API programs in place, very few have a formal API strategy, and that they're unclear about the value at stake and uncertain about how to implement a successful API program. So to me, th this is really an important takeaway. Um, you know, th this, this means that only a small minority uh, really has the right foundation to really push the boundaries with APIs. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Um, essentially ways that you can use our clean and match API to push the boundaries of your imagination. And hopefully the, the, the way that you think about IT innovation and collaboration with the business. So in previous webinars, we've, uh, we've looked briefly uh, at you know, some of the benefits of digital transformation, how they're fueling uh, new products, new channels, new ways to monetize data, but that they also you know, they require real-time access to as much relevant and reliable data as possible. Uh, APIs, similarly, are helping businesses today to achieve many of the same benefits by linking disparate systems, disparate uh, data and best-in-class services in real time with less implementation than it used to require. The ROI potential here is really something uh, significant. So what in the world can you do with the WinPeers Clean and Match API? Let's start with a quick explanation and a quick demo to put this into context. So the Clean and Match API exposes the same core functionality to be used programmatically. We've, we've looked at this core functionality on previous webinars, uh, the data quality profiling, uh, the cleansing and standardization, and the data matching and survivorship, right? We've covered these specific functions uh, in length uh, during previous webinars. So today it's really just a quick reminder, just a, a quick illustration, if you will, in terms of what specific functionality is going to be exposed to you through the uh, through the API. 
So let's go ahead and jump over to a quick look at the software, right? Again, we've looked at this at, on, on weeks past here. So just kind of a quick uh, illustration. Right, so we, we talk about data and data sources. The API is gonna uh, allow you quite a bit of flexibility when it comes to working with data sources, right? Um, we look at uh, cleaning, uh, profiling, right? And the data profiling can be called via API to feed a real-time data quality dashboard, for example. The data cleansing and standardization up top Right? That can be called via API to programmatically prep and transform the data. Right? When we look at uh, the data matching and survivorship, that can be called via API for the best in class air tolerant Google like search and do prevention. This is the, the matching piece. This is usually the biggest value because most other systems don't have good mechanisms in place for this. Right, you, you might have uh, you know duplicates in one system, or you've got um, you know essentially the same in, in information in, in siloed uh, systems, but you know again with different names, different addresses, uh, and 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 you know the other information. It's always going to vary source by source. If you can't find the data, uh, that's going to be a problem, uh, and and that could be because it's not there, or because the attributes are not the exact same, right? So again, you know, thinking about uh, the matching and the survivorship in context, um, it's it's going to, it, you know, via an API, it's going to help you to make a search more effective. It's also going to help make the dupe uh, preventative measures uh, more effective. Um, so when we look at the the matching here, again, very, lots of flexibility with which sources we're including in the matching. Lots of flexibility in terms of. Uh, which columns were matching against which columns. Lots, lots of flexibility here in terms of how many groups of, of match criteria we're working with, how many criteria or conditions per group, right? And, you know, the way that we're, we're essentially configuring each condition to work, right? Which algorithm are we using? At what level? How are we handling null values? We can set up the knowledge base library. And again, this is customizable. So again, all of these options are gonna be exposed to you for programmatic use uh, with the API. Run a quick match event here, move over to the results. And again, a few different views for exporting data, right? Preset views, lots of ways to filter the data and to sort the data. Also ways to set up the survivorship, right? Uh, assigning master records. We've looked at this in, in other uh, webinars, right? We can set up multiple rules here to prioritize which records are gonna be the master records. Uh, updating and overwriting uh, or merging data, right? So all of this functionality is gonna be available to you uh, for programmatic use uh, with the API. Let's go ahead and switch gears here and look at a, a very simple example uh, of the API. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch screens here. So again, keep in mind, this is a very simple example. The way that you might use the API may be very different. And I think when we think about API, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not expecting kind of a, a graphical user interface, right? I mean, it, it could be there, it could, it could not be there, depending on how you're using the API. But this is just a very simple example to, to show you some of the things that can be done with the API. So in this case, um, this has been, you know, essentially pre-configured, right? It's kind of a custom solution. We have some data, we have some data cleansing and standardization rules, and a user-initiated transformation in real time, right? So again, we've got some options up top. I can load a very specific data set, and uh, I can take a look at statistics, if that's what I choose to do, data quality statistics here. Let's stay on load for a minute. We can see all of the input, right? The source data, the way it's essentially uh, working through the, uh, the workflow here. And we've got a few options up top in terms of how to clean and standardize the data. So we've set this up. And again, we're gonna expose all of this to you. It's really, it's really a question of, you know, how are you gonna, how are you gonna work with this? How are you gonna implement the solution? In this case, we're, we're just essentially exposing three options to adjust the, the casing of the address one column. So to put that in lowercase, 
to remove non-printable characters from the company name. You can see one here. And merge first name and surname columns, which again, you know, this is that source data. And I can simply clean and all of those changes are made. You can see the new column with the merge data. You can see that the, the non-printable character is no longer there. And all of the data in the address one field here is now in lowercase, right? So again, real-time transformation of the data, right? Um, so quite a bit of flexibility with the way that this is actually gonna be implemented. Let's go ahead and transition uh, back to the slides here for a minute before we open it up to, uh, to questions today. Great, let me get this off my screen here. Great, so let, let's start by looking at uh, the three primary use cases for when peers clean a match API, right? The kind of general business use cases. Uh, those three are streaming, data quality firewall, and searching or linking, right? So I'm gonna move through this pretty quickly. Uh, would certainly welcome uh, any questions. For streaming data, think uh, SSIS, think uh, ETL, think data warehouse, transactional data, or predictive analytics uh, initiatives. Essentially regularly uh, streaming uh, large data sets programmatically against some other source of, of, let's just say, master data. We can then programmatically transform and match the new data, right? The second scenario here, the data quality firewall, this is a way of keeping your data clean, right? And so there's two different approaches here. We'll look at this uh, in a minute here, but um, this allows you the real-time data quality uh, profiling statistics, right? Uh, looking at the content and the structure of the data quality, uh, programmatically transforming new and existing data, and best-in-class linkage and deduplication mechanisms, right? to keep that data clean. The third scenario here, searching or linking, this essentially allows you to strategically link and even search uh, one or multiple disparate data sets with best in class, error tolerant, uh, and similarity uh, type of mechanisms. So the, this third uh, use case here, the, the biggest value here is typically uh, just being able to quickly and easily uh, link multiple disparate data set systems using that error tolerant uh, linkage uh, mechanisms, right? That uh, the, the similarity uh, mechanisms that we talked about and the similarity mechanisms that you see in the software. Uh, but this type of functionality, it's also important for uh, duplicate prevention, right? Uh, if you find the data, if you're able to find the data, right, you're less likely to enter it in the system uh, twice, right? Let's look at uh, just a few illustrations here of what that architecture might look like. Uh, I have a few slides here and um, just wanna kind of take you through what that might potentially look like for you. So for streaming, it is, I think the most common scenario is potentially many to one, but it certainly could be a one-to-one. -one. The data quality firewall, um, I, I believe there's probably two very common ways to, uh, to implement this type of solution. Um, essentially uh, receiving data directly from business applications uh, into or, or through rather uh, the WinPeer Clean and Match API, uh, transforming the data prior to loading it to the master database. Or the second way here would just be to uh, work with uh, existing data using database triggers, right? Uh, now, searching and linking, uh, this is, uh, let me just move slides here. Uh, this is again, usually allowing you to view results or data, right? Relevant uh, search results uh, or linkage results from multiple disparate data systems. So typically uh, more than one database, but again, certainly could, uh, you know, essentially be connecting out or pointing out to a single database. The uh, last couple of slides here before we open it up to uh, questions, I'm gonna do a quick time check here. Okay, we're still pretty good. Uh, the last couple of slides here, so five data matching uh, use cases for MDM. And I think this is important because, you know, 
Many people don't realize the importance of data cleansing, standardization, and especially data matching uh, when it comes to master data management. So WinPeer's Clean and Match software helps you to simplify the process of data cleansing and master data management uh, by using our software or the API for the initial uh, MDM load. Uh, also, of course, uh, your daily batch loads, uh, real-time interactions with the API, uh, data integration activities from uh, M&As, and to link and to search multiple disparate data systems, right? Let's move on to the last slide here before we open it up to, to questions here. I want to wrap up with a few of the, you know, a few of some of the uh, innovative ways that organizations have uh, incorporated our Clean and Match API to accelerate project timelines, to maximize cost savings, uh, and to fuel uh, data-driven uh, activities. So a few you know, high-level examples here. If we look to law enforcement, law enforcement uh, is, is uh, essentially searching and linking in real time uh, disparate data sets uh, to mitigate risks and to uh, ensure community safety. Uh, OFAC compliance, this one applies to a variety of companies and a variety of industries, um, just essentially requiring them to uh, to check anyone that they do business with uh, against a variety of international blacklists. And again, like we, we mentioned earlier, again, those names, addresses, contact information, it's never going to be the same from system to system. So again, you know, being able to do that with, you know, a best in class error tolerant mechanism uh, is, uh, is going to be to your advantage. Those are six figure uh, penalties for, no, for non-compliance there. Uh, healthcare, real-time linking or streaming of patient data with clinical uh, or treatment um, type of data to ensure better outcomes. E-commerce, uh, real-time linking of internal product data to external product data sources to gain competitive market insight, for example. And predictive analytics, again, um, very, very common from uh, industry to industry. Uh, and this can be done in batch or real time or streaming, uh, working with subscriber, audience, customer, transactional or other data to ensure better information and better data-driven decision-making. So I'm gonna leave it there for now and I'm gonna open it up to, uh, to questions. You know, my goal today was to really kind of paint the picture in terms of, you know, what can be accomplished and to, to hopefully uh, get you to start thinking about uh, ways that um, maybe you can work with the API within your organization. So again, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to open it up to questions. I hope I was able to uh, to kind of connect all of the dots there. Um, but please feel free to uh, submit any uh, questions that might have come up. Great. Um, first question. Do you have a trial version of this and some documentation available? Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, you can uh, submit the request, winpeer.com, um, submit the request there and we'll send you all of the information. Feel free to reach out to me directly and I can send you that information as well. Um, the, uh, again, we do have a, a few different uh, examples of how, how, the, uh, how the API can be set up to work. Uh, bulk matching, uh, searching, uh, and the cleaning that we looked at here, uh, and all of the documentation is included. So it's uh, it's very quick and simple to set up. Appreciate your uh, question there. Next question: um, What are the basic requirements? Good question. So you know, again, I'd welcome an offline conversation. You know, I think there there are kind of uh, quite a few unique uh, requirements that will come up based on the way that you want to implement the solution. Uh, but at a very high level, uh, the uh, the API does need to be installed on a Windows machine, on a Windows box, uh, a 64-bit system with the .NET Framework 4.5. Supported languages include uh, C Sharp, Java, and VB.NET. But again, you know, the, the documentation itself will probably answer some of those questions. 
happy to send that out to you, have an offline conversation, or even schedule a call. Appreciate the, uh, the question there. Next question here, what is the cost for something like this? Um, it kind of depends. So the, the, the API um, is, a, is a four or five figure solution depending on the package and depending on you know, your, your purchasing history with us. We do have a customer loyalty program. We do have uh, you know, an upgrade path available. Um, so you know, again, feel free to get in touch uh, if you wanna discuss uh, you know, your purchase history, our customer loyalty program, upgrade path and what that pricing would look like. Or again, get in touch if you'd like a, uh, a first time quote on this. So great question there. But again, you know, when it comes to the pricing, very, very economical and very, very powerful. Again, essentially what you're accessing here um, or what we're exposing to you is the full, uh, you know, feature set from the Clean and Match Enterprise Edition. So no limitations on the number of records or columns or the number of data sources and things like that. So you've got quite a bit of flexibility with the way that you implement that solution. So again, thanks for, thanks for the question. See if any other uh, questions coming in here. That looks like about it. So I think I'm probably gonna get, give everybody uh, a bit of time back to your day. Wanna thank everyone again for joining. Really appreciate your interest. Again, want to emphasize, um, you know, please get in touch if you have any feedback uh, about these webinars. If you have any questions, happy to have a conversation. If you have any suggestions for future topics, we'd be really interested to, to hear those suggestions. If you have any interest in joining us as a guest speaker, feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to have that conversation. Um, but otherwise, thank you again for joining today. Really appreciate it and uh, look forward to speaking with you soon. Take good care.